Namaste. This is David Hawthorne at astroview.com. Today is the 18th of November, 2013. The following is the Vedic astrology reading for Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis, based on the 28th of July, 1929, at 2.30 p.m. in Southampton, New York. Now, you know already that Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis was married to John Kennedy, who was the 35th President of the United States, who was assassinated, and she later married the billionaire Aristotle Onassis. Now, using Vedic astrology from India and the sidereal zodiac, and using systems approach to interpreting horoscopes, we see that the seventh sign of the zodiac is in the first house of self. This is Libra rising sign at 25 degrees, which becomes most effective point of all 12 houses. Any planet close to 25 degrees has an impact. Now this is always the first house, regardless of the number sitting in the first house. In this case, the seventh sign is sitting in the first house. This is Libra in the first house. Scorpio in the second house, Sagittarius in the third house with Saturn in Sagittarius, Capricorn in the fourth house, Aquarius in the fifth house, Pisces in the sixth house, Aries in the seventh house, Taurus in the eighth house. Back here in the seventh house, Aries, we have Moon and Rahu. In the eighth house, Taurus, we have Venus and Jupiter. Then we have Gemini in the ninth house, Cancer in the tenth house with the royal sun, and Mercury. And in Leo, we have Mars in the 11th house, and in the 12th house is Virgo. So we know that Libra rising sign is a magnetic personality, an air sign, and movable sign. For Libra, the four kindreds of life, first house of self, fourth house of home life, seventh house of marriage, tenth house of career, are movable signs. So Libra-born persons are not afraid to go places and do things, and they can have changes in home, in marriage, relationships, careers. They're very well suited to a public position because this is the 10th house of career and this is ruled by the royal moon. So often Libras are work with the public in some fashion. Now K2, K-E-T-U, the southern node of the moon is sitting in the first house. And K2 is known as Moksha Karaka, the significator for enlightenment and spirituality. So this brings profound spirituality to Jackie Onassis. But K2 also brings suffering, setbacks, catastrophes, calamities. So it's Sanchita Karma, karma from previous lifetimes. And Rahu, the northern node of the moon, is sitting in the seventh house of marriage. Rahu is a planet of charisma, fame, and fortune. So she can marry someone who is quite famous. But the problem is that Rahu and K2 are close to the rising sign degree. This is almost 25 degrees. The rising sign is 25 degrees. So their impact is applicable where they occupy and where they aspect. So K2 and Rahu aspect five, seven, and nine houses away. So K2 afflicts five houses away. One, two, three, four, five. This is the house of children and her mind is her spiritual mind, spiritual outlook. And education, can give spiritual education. She did a lot of uh, pursuing different uh, schools. In fact, she went to uh, Vassar College in New York. She went to the Sorbonne in, in Paris. Ultimately, she graduated from George Washington University with a degree in French literature. And so this is the house of children, mind, and higher education. This K2 influence on the house of children, not good. She apparently uh, had a stillborn child for the first daughter. S then she had two more children, Carolyn and John Kennedy. Then her last child was Patrick, who was a boy that lived only for two days. So she lost two of four children. K2 aspects into the seventh house of marriage, and so there was some tremendous catastrophe in marriage with her husband being assassinated and she also lost her second husband as well. And K2 afflicts this ninth house of father. And 
gurus and spirituality. So there was some disappointments there. Her parents got divorced when she was 11, and she was actually raised by her mother and stepfather. Rahu here is afflicting the house of marriage. It's afflicting the house, the uh, 11th house, but Mars is sitting there, and Mars rules Aries. So this Rahu is afflicting the house where Mars is sitting, so this disturbs marriage. And Rahu is afflicting the first house. Also gave her charisma, fame, and fortune, but also cut short her lifespan. She died at the age of 64 from lung cancer. She At one point, she was smoking three packs of cigarettes a day, and she ultimately died from lung cancer. And then Rahu afflicts this third house of younger siblings. She did not have biological younger siblings. She did have two younger siblings on her mother's side, but not with her father. So they were step-siblings. I often see Saturn being connected with step-siblings or adopted siblings or children. If it's in the third house, it can give younger step-siblings. In the eleventh house, it can give older step-siblings. In the fifth house, it can give step-children or adopted children. And its aspect on the ninth house could give a stepfather as well. That's just my personal observation over the years about this Saturn situation. Now look at this royal sun. Sun is the king of the planetary cabinet, and it's sitting right here in the tenth house of career. So she can become a king. In fact, she was first lady of the United States for two years, 1961 to 1963, while her husband was president. I think it's a very royal career. Mars gives lots of property and gains through marriage to wealthy husbands. Venus ruling her chart went into the eighth house of research and language. So she did uh, speak French fluently and I think a couple of other languages. Very good with knowledge and research, going deeply into knowledge. Venus at 28 degrees is close to the rising sign of 25 degrees. So the aspect of Venus on the second house gives her wealth and status through her own self-efforts. Venus rules the chart. And through beauty and fashion, photography, design, architecture. She renovated the White House when she was living there and brought in all this historic artwork and this beautiful paintings, beautiful furnishings. She did a very terrific job in the White House. Jupiter here is in the eighth house. Jupiter rules husband and children. Eighth house is transformations, vulnerability, accidents, and death-like experiences. So she loses two children and her husband is assassinated. This is a weak, weak position here. If I had been her astrologer, I would have said that she needed a blue sapphire to strengthen her Saturn. She needed a pearl to strengthen her moon, ruling the career in the house of marriage. See, moon and Rahu in the house of marriage gives a very public marriage. Moon is the public, Rahu's fame and fortune. She would, would have, it would have been good for her to wear a diamond for her Venus and even a yellow sapphire for her Jupiter. And sun and Mercury become weak because the landlord moon is weak. And moon is weak because the landlord moon is in Aries, ruled by Mars, and Mars is in a house afflicted by Rahu. So Mars becomes weak. Planets cannot give greater results than the strength of their landlord, the dispositor. So Saturn, which is Ayush Karaka, is weak at one degree, and the landlord Jupiter drags it into the eighth. So that cuts short her lifespan as well. She was born in a K2 main period. It lasted for about the first six years of her life. K2 spirituality. So she was born to be on a very spiritual path, and it was going to bring karma to her, Sanchita karma, some suffering connected with children, marriage, that type of thing. Her main, her sub-period was Venus, so that also connects her with art and beauty and fashion. At the age of six, she went into 20 years of Venus. So from six to 26, she was in Venus. She was very beautiful and uh, very fashionable. She marries her husband. So we have here, let's see, maybe not at that point. Then she goes into six years of sun between 1955 and 1960. So by the time she finishes six years of sun, royal sun in the house of career, ruled by moon in the house of marriage, she's with this senator 
who becomes the president. You see, he gets elected in November 1960. So that was a tail end of the Sun main period and the Venus sub-period. So on the, in January 61, they move into the White House, and then she enters a 10-year situation there. But look what happened here. In July 1962, she went into Rahu sub-period and the Moon main period. All right, Moon is in the house of marriage, and it's ruled by an, Mars, which is afflicted in the house of Rahu, unexpected calamity. And that was the sub-period from July 62 till January 64. She was in Rahu, and her husband was assassinated in November 63. Rahu, in the house of marriage, afflicting the house of marriage, afflicting the landlord for the house of marriage. See, this is only three degrees of separation between Mars and Rahu. That's a major impact, and Mars is sitting in a house afflicted by Rahu. So that's the assassination right there. Very powerful. Okay, these are the main points from the chart for Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis. I hope these points are helpful. And as always, you can send me an email to david at astroview.com with any questions or comments. Namaste. Thank you.